It's kind of shocking how bad the number two overall pick has been since 2010. A couple weeks ago, I did a video ranking every number one overall pick since 2010. You have some great players that went like Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, Victor Wimbanyama, Anthony Edwards, the list goes on a little bit. And while you did have your bust, I didn't realize how much of a letdown the second overall pick has kind of been since 2010. So there are still some good players, don't get me wrong. And in today's video, we are going to be going from 14 to one, ranking those players that went second overall in the NBA draft. If you guys enjoyed this style of content, feel free to drop a thumbs up. Up. The third overall pick is kind of much better overall. So just let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments below. Also, like always, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my picks. And let's get into this. All right, we're going to start things off with the number two overall pick in the 2011 draft. Right after Kyrie Irving, a draft that also consisted of Clay Thompson, Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler. We're going to be talking about Derek Williams. Derek Williams is still just 32 years old today. He pretty much only played six years in the NBA. He came out of college as a sophomore from Arizona, where he was a beast over there, averaging 19 plus points, A plus rebounds. And like I said, went second overall to the Minnesota Timberwolves where he averaged just nine points on 41% shooting in his rookie year playing in 66 games. And then in year two, kind of improved a little bit. 12 points, five and a half rebounds a night, shot 43% from the field and 33% from three. There were some defensive issues though with Derek Williams. But then in year three, it was kind of shocking when he ended up getting traded to the Sacramento Kings straight up for Lou Richard Muba Mute. And his career was pretty much done after that. I mean, Minnesota and Sacramento were pretty much the two worst ran franchises in the 2010s. And that's saying a lot because there were some bad, bad ran franchises. He averaged eight and a half points in his first year in Sacramento, eight and a half again, and then ended up being on the New York Knicks in 2016. The Miami Heat, Cavs in 2017, finished his career off in 2018 with the LA Lakers, averaging one point across two games. And in my opinion, was the worst second overall pick since 2010. Next up, we're going to talk about somebody that went second overall in the 2020 draft. Yeah, we're going to talk about James Wiseman. So Wiseman went right after Anthony Edwards and right before Lamelo Ball. Does not help this case whatsoever. He was the top big man in the class coming out of Memphis. Had a pretty solid offensive rookie year in just 39 games. He averaged 11 and a half points, six rebounds and about a block a night. Shot 52% from the field. There definitely were some footwork issues, some defensive issues, and just overall mobility in the half court. He did not play at all in the 2022 season with a knee injury. And funny enough, the Golden State Warriors won the NBA Finals that year. He went on to get traded in the 2020. 23 season after just playing 21 games with the Warriors and getting traded to the Detroit Pistons in a multiple team trade that was pretty much for Gary Payton. His numbers looked fine on paper last year with Detroit in those 24 games and this year with Detroit on the worst team in the NBA. He's still struggling to find playing time. He's appeared in 56 games, 16 and a half minutes a night, seven points, five rebounds on 64% shooting. There's still some good offensive talent in there and I think he could be a serviceable backup big man for a little bit in the NBA. He's just never going to be an all-star center that we thought he could have been coming out of Memphis. All right, coming in at number 12, we're going to talk about somebody that went second overall in the 2018 draft. One of the best draft classes we will talk about in this video. He went right after DeAndre Aiden, right before Luka Doncic. Yes, Marvin Bagley III selected right before a generational talent in Luka. Remember when I said that the Sacramento Kings were a poorly ran franchise in the 2010s? This is exhibit A. Bagley was a fine offensive big man coming out of Duke, but there were definitely some defensive issues, definitely some motor issues. And he was a good offensive talent right out of the gate. He he did deal with injuries in his first three years with Sacramento. He finished with 15 points, seven and a half rebounds, and shot 50% from the field in his rookie season as a 19-year-old. It was encouraging, but then only appeared in 13 games in the 2020 season. Then there was some weird stuff with his brother and his overall camp, and they wanted him to get traded when he really didn't even prove much in Sacramento so far. They ended up getting his wish after he was traded to the Detroit Pistons, like James Wiseman, but in the 2022 season, it was a four-team trade, and then the Pistons ended up signing Bagley to a contract extension so at least he got somewhat of a bag and then was traded to the Washington Wizards this year. So he's played for the Sacramento Kings, the Detroit Pistons, and the Washington Wizards. Some of the worst teams in the NBA since 2018. Obviously, the Kings are much better right now, but it still wasn't a good pick and he's going to come in at number 12. Coming in at number 11, we're going to have the second overall pick in the 2010 NBA draft out of Ohio State, Evan Turner. And the reason why I have Evan Turner higher than Bagley and Wiseman, because at least we've seen Turner play 10 years in the NBA. I do wonder if Bagley and Wiseman will hit that threshold. Evan Turner did have a solid two year stretch from 2013 to 2014, where he pretty much averaged 13 and a half points, six rebounds and four assists a night and shot 34% from three, which was kind of a peak for him. He did finish top five and six man of the year voting in 2017 for Portland, but he really wasn't an efficient shooting guard at all in the 
the NBA in a league that was transitioning into being a more floor spacing three point shooting league. But he hit free agency at the right time. And in the 2016 offseason, when the salary cap went up, teams were just throwing money left and right at role players. And he got basically 16 million a year plus for the next four years. And he has a career earnings of $98 million in the NBA for averaging nine and a half points, four and a half rebounds, three and a half assists, and shooting 43% from the field, 29% from three in his 10 year career. It was pretty cool in 2012. The number one and two overall picks were from the same school, from Kentucky. Anthony Davis, a generational big man, went number one. And Michael Kidd Gilchrist, maybe somebody with the worst jump shot form of all time, went number two to the Charlotte Hornets. I talked about how poor the Timberwolves and Kings were ran in the 2010s. Charlotte is right up there with them. He went right ahead of Bradley Beal. Yes, we could have seen Bradley Beal and Kemba Walker in Charlotte, but no, they passed up on Beal to take Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who was mainly known for his defense at Kentucky, and he was a good defender. He did finish top 10 in defensive player of the year voting in year three in 2015. He did play eight years in the NBA and was not really a good offensive player whatsoever. In those eight years, he averaged eight and a half points, five and a half rebounds, and shot 47% from the field across two different teams, pretty much seven years in Charlotte and then one year in Dallas. But I think he was a pretty good defender throughout his career, and that's why he's being higher on this list than Evan Turner, Marvin Bagley, James Wiseman, and Derek Williams. The next three guys were such good talents in college and in early parts of their NBA careers, but unfortunately, injuries did derail them reaching the peak of their careers. So we're going to start off that trio with Jabari Parker coming in at number nine. He was the second overall pick in 2014, right up there with Andrew Wiggins. And Parker was off to a great start in his NBA career. He averaged 16 points, five and a half rebounds, and shot 49% from the field in the first three years of his career, where he was already dealing with some injuries. Then just bouncing around from a bunch of different teams after Milwaukee, spending some time in Chicago, some time in Washington, some time in Atlanta and Sacramento. He did miss 300 games though over the course of his first six years in the NBA and then kind of fizzled out of the league in 2022 after playing with the Boston Celtics most recently. But man, Jabari Parker could have been one of the best offensive forwards in the NBA. Could have been a good stretch for as well with a nice ball handling ability if he never had those major leg issues and injuries that he had in the earlier part of his career. It's a true what if story because him and Giannis could have been an elite duo in Milwaukee for years and years. Coming in at number eight, we have someone that's still active and hasn't played since January of 2022. And that's going to be the second overall pick in the 2017 draft, Lonzo Ball. So the number one overall pick in the 2017 draft in Markel Fultz did not work out, but the third overall pick in Jason Tatum did. And Lonzo got off to a weird start of his career, had a phenomenal summer league right out of the gate, but had some inefficiency issues in the first part of his career. He could not hit a free throw to save his life, but you saw the playmaking ability. You saw the defensive potential. You saw the elite rebounding for someone that was a 6'6 point guard that was just a true highlight reel at UCLA the year prior. Then he was in the Anthony Davis trade in the 2019 offseason. He goes to the Pelicans and has two really good years there. He ended up averaging 13 points, six and a half assists, five and a half rebounds, a steal and a half a night, and shot 41% from the field, but 38% from three on seven attempts a night. Lonzo turned into an elite three-point shooter in his time in New Orleans, improved the free throw shooting, basically going from 42% to 66% in his two years in New Orleans. And we all thought it was crazy at the time when the Pelicans did not want to retain him and match the contract that the Bulls gave him in restricted free agency. I guess in hindsight, they maybe knew he was a ticking time bomb with his injury history. But in those 35 games, man, the 2022 Bulls were special. He averaged 13 points, five and a half rebounds, five assists, two steals a night, shot 42% from the field, 42% from three on seven and a half attempts a night, shot 75% from the line, played elite defense, and that Bulls team with DeRozan, Vucevic, Levine, and Lonzo, all fully healthy, it was so much fun to watch, and it's a shame he did not play it all throughout the rest of that year after January, did not play it all in 2023, is not going to play it all in 2024, but Lonzo is going to be ahead of Parker because he could still have somewhat of a long career if he can come back healthy in 2025. So coming in at number seven, we got Victor Ol Oladipo, the second overall pick in the 2013 draft. Oladipo spent three years in Orlando before getting traded to Oklahoma City in the Serge Ibaka deal. Spent one year in Oklahoma City during Russ's MVP year and that got traded to Indiana in the 2017 offseason in the Paul George trade along with DeMontis Sabonis. Before getting traded to Indiana in Oladipo's four-year NBA career so far, he averaged 16 points, four assists, and four and a half rebounds a night. And then went on to win the most improved player award in the 2018 season. He was an all-star, all-defensive first team member, all NBA third team member and finished 13th in MVP voting where he averaged 23 points, two and a half steals, four and a half assists, 
five rebounds a night and shot 47% from the field, 37% from three, and 80% from the line. Old Depot looked like one of the best young shooting guards in all of basketball, but then injuries derailed his career. 36 games played in 2019 with a season-ending injury after being an all-star. Just appeared in 19 games in 2020, 33 games in 2021, eight games in 2022, and then 42 games in 2023 for the Heat, and he has not played at all in 2024. Old Depot could have definitely been top three on this list if his injuries were not derailed by injuries. So Jabari Parker, Lonzo Ball, Old Depot, what could have been, man. So coming in at number six, we have D'Angelo Russell of the LA Lakers. He was the second overall pick out of Ohio State, like Evan Turner, but in the 2015 draft. And something D'Lo has been that the other three players I just mentioned have not, and that's pretty much healthy. Like D'Lo has been out there for most of his career. He had some fun years in LA before getting traded to the Nets in a salary dump trade. And they were also going to draft Lonzo Ball in 2017 as well. D'Lo turned his career around in Brooklyn, where in the second Second year in Brooklyn was an all-star, finished runner-up and most improved, and averaged 21 points, seven assists, and four rebounds a night, and led the Brooklyn Nets to a playoff team as a six seed. He was then in a sign and trade with Golden State. KD went to Brooklyn, Delo went to Golden State, spent half a year there in that horrible Golden State year in 2020 before getting traded for Andrew Wiggins, and then pretty much spent two and a half years in Minnesota before getting traded back to the LA Lakers, going full circle, spent 17 games with the Lakers last year, and has been a very good player for the Lakers this year. 18 points. Points, six and a half assists, three rebounds a night, shooting 42% from three on seven attempts a night in year number nine. And I think Devo is still going to be around for a little bit. So that's why he's coming in at number six on this list. Coming in at number five, we have the second overall pick in the 2021 draft. And that is going to be Jalen Green, who came from the G League Ignite. Definitely the best G League Ignite player so far. And Jalen Green has had an up and down first three years in the NBA. He finished fourth in rookie of the year voting in the 2022 season, where he shot 42% from the field, 34% from three. In year two, he shot 41% from the field, 33% from three. So taking a step back and looked like kind of empty stats on a bad Rockets team. This year though, like he's just been such a weird player. Got off to a pretty brutal start for the first half of the year, shooting basically 41% from the field and 32% from three. And we were like, he's never going to improve as a consistent shooter. But over Jalen Green's last 17 games, he's been averaging 28 points, six rebounds and four assists a night, shooting 48% from the field. 39% from three and 80% from the line looks like a true number one scoring option. And if that potential could pretty much expand to the rest of his career, I may have him too low at number five on this list. But if he goes back to his inefficient ways, I don't think he's going to crack the top five. Coming in at number four, we have the most recent second overall pick, and that's Brandon Miller from the 2023 draft. The potential is there with Brandon Miller in his rookie season in a horrible environment in Charlotte. He's still putting up good numbers, 17 points, four rebounds, two and a half assists a night, 44% from the field, 37% from three, 81% from the line. He looks like he has a great handle for somebody at 6'9", a smooth pull-up jumper, is actually trying on the defensive end of the floor, and seems like one of the grown-ups on the team, and this is just his rookie season. He's going to be getting a new head coach next year as well, with Steve Clifford transitioning into a more front office role, and I'm really excited about the future with Brandon Miller fully healthy with a great playmaking point guard in LaMelo Ball that can only make Brandon Miller better, and yes, in my opinion, I do think he has a higher potential than Jalen Green long term. So coming in at number three, we have Chet Holmgren, also technically a rookie like Brandon Miller, but was the second overall pick in the 2022 draft. Chet was my number one player in that 2022 class, did not play at all in his rookie season. He got a foot injury before the season even started. Was definitely a polarizing prospect coming out of Gonzaga just because of his weight and he was very skinny at the time, but he has been more than you could ever ask for for a rookie coming off a major foot injury. 16 and a half points, eight rebounds, two and a half assists a night, two and a half blocks a night, shooting 53% from the field, 38% from three and 80% from the line on one of the better teams in the Western Conference. And he's doing all of this as a 21 year old rookie. Chad Holmgren has a super high ceiling. I think it's higher than Jalen Green's. I think it's higher than Brandon Miller's. I had a lot of debate if I wanted to put Chet at number two, but I don't know if he could be like a true number one option like the guy at number two that is somewhat shown so far. So coming in at number two, it's Brandon Ingram, the second overall pick from the 2016 draft. This is year eight for Brandon Miller in the NBA. Started off his career in LA and like Lonzo Ball was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans in the AD trade in 2019. It is wild. The Lakers had the second overall pick in three straight drafts with D'Lo in 2015, Ingram in 2016, and Lonzo in 2017. Ingram definitely showed a ton of promise in LA. And then when he got traded to New Orleans. One most improved player that year was an all-star where he averaged 24 points and really blossomed as a playmaking forward that is still an efficient scorer. And basically in the five years he has spent in New Orleans has averaged 23 points, five assists, five and a half rebounds a night, shooting 47% from the field, 
37% from three and 85% from the line. Like I said, I did have a lot of debate with myself who I wanted to put at two between Chad Holmgren and Brandon Ingram. So let me know in the comments what you would have done. But at number one, it's a no brainer. We should all have the same number one guy, the second overall pick in the 2019 draft. Ja Morant. Yes, there's been off the court issues. Yes, Ja has dealt with some injuries in his career so far, but he's the only guy that I mentioned in this video that is top five player in the league potential, in my opinion. Ja won rookie of the year from his draft class. He won most improved player in 2022. He's a two-time all-star. And this season was cut short with the suspension and the season ending shoulder surgery. But in the 2022 and 23 seasons combined, he averaged 27 points, seven and a half assists, over a steal a night, six rebounds, and shot 48% from the field and led the Grizzlies to the playoffs multiple times. He's still just 24 years old and I'm super excited to see fully healthy John Morant on the floor again next year because the league is better with him out there. And like I said, in my opinion, there's really no debate for anybody else with the best second overall pick since 2010. It's Ja. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of this video. Let me know what you agree with or disagree with in the comments below. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to see me do this with third overall picks since 2010, drop a thumbs up. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.